I'm really excited to realize that I wasn't so far off track. When I put something in my book about practicing, I made a crazy memory system. And I realized at the time that I wrote the book, I didn't have a lot of knowledge of functional harmony, turnarounds and, uh, you know, movements of uh, regular chord movements that most progressions have. But what I did have was a good knowledge of chords and so, and I had learned about memory castles and memory systems. So I created a mnemonic system based on um, one of the common memory champion systems and created a character to go with each chord. And it had to do with the letter name of the chord. So B flat might be like Betty Boop, but B flat, and I can't remember which B flat, you know, B flat seven maybe was Betty Boop or I don't know. Um, as you can see, I never learned my own system very well, but most people didn't understand what my system was. Well, I just want to say I have just discovered a new system and I can't believe it really shows me that in a way it was on track. It's called, um, it was called Lego Blocks to Harmony and I'm not sure if this person is still alive. Um, it was last published in 2008 and I found a, I just bought a PDF of a book based on that book. Um, which also was from around 2008. And um, I'll, I'll post a picture of it because frankly I'm blanking on the name. But the point is they talk about these bricks that create jazz tunes and bricks and joins and um, these ways of diagramming that are just, you know, it's really exciting me because it's pretty much, and they have kind of crazy names. Um, some of which, um, many of which are based on the um, songs that they appear in, but also um, may have sort of other connotations as well. And again, it just strikes me as a similar concept to what I was working on. Clearly also a concept that, you know, while some people, people definitely have thought about learning jazz tunes by contrafacts. For example, you know, and knowing, well, this bridge appears in this situation and, you know, here's how you learn autumn leaves, you know, the, the, the chord progression and how it reverses and things like that. But um, to have sort of this whole vocabulary of these bricks with these crazy names, um, it's really, there's a lot of interesting tidbits in there I'm going to work on. Um, and I, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I've also just found an ear training program and there's some great resources on a Reddit site. And I've always had a very good ear. However, uh, I just tested my children on this. Nobody ever, 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 even though I knew all my intervals, no one ever explained to me this concept that your first four intervals resolve downward. Your first four notes of your, of your major scale resolve downwards and your next four notes of the major scale uh, resolve outward, upwards. Um, and the uh, F sharp or flat five, sharp four or flat five tends to resolve up upwards. What this particular software does is it plays a major, um, major key cadence and then you test which scale degree it is and it constantly changes the key. And actually it's a good, it's a good test. It took me a few tries. Um, I'm very good, you know, in one key, but sometimes I would get thrown off and I would see where my weak points were. Like I had trouble with major sixth um, and um, uh, sort of, you know, towards the more of the interval, I was very good at sevenths and very good at seconds. Um, and then after you do well on that, you go to chromatics and things like that. The reason I started doing all this was because I'm sort of just starting to learn more complex harmony and reharmonizations, and it's just kicking my butt. The grunt work of it is stuff that I don't want to do, so my natural inclination is to try to program a computer to do it or, or something like that. Um, but the other thing is it, it also realize, you know, I realize, first of all, most musicians don't learn this stuff. Um, it's definitely outside of our comfort zone and it's it's not necessary. It would be like uh, most writers don't learn to diagram sentences. I would I would argue most of them don't. And certainly you don't even know how you have to know how to spell um, to write or to tell a good story. Um, so by the same token, you don't need music theory to make good music. However, as you want to compose and arrange, um, and reharmonize, it really becomes helpful to know, well, why am I doing it this way? And, and I've just been so ear guided, but then I had no intellectual foundation to go with the ear. And also probably because I'm naturally lazy, my ear was better than my intellect. So I just went with that and I didn't bother to learn the, the, you know, the, the reasons for things. But in my frustration with not being able to understand this stuff, I started looking and, and found some great resources on Reddit. I think, again, this goes to like, what is the internet good for right now? And yes, there's a lot of YouTube videos, but you know, you can't always trust. Sometimes people are just full of, full of it. <laughs> and so you don't necessarily want to say, um, and it can be hard even going on forums. Sometimes you're like, 
Well, is that the answer or is it not the answer? But anyway, I'm starting to understand new things about the circle of fifths and, and uh, lattices, harmony lattices, and oh man, there's some really deep stuff. Deep, deep, deep stuff. In fact, oh, I gotta, te I gotta keep better notes because I could make a lot of videos. I started to understand um, the tempered scale better than I've ever understood it before. And overtones and things like that. Wow, never understood that before as well as I did based on some stuff I found last week. And one little pro tip I might suggest, I went on Pinterest. A lot, way a lot of, found a lot of these things actually was through Pinterest because I would search for chord diagrams and that way found some really interesting things, you know, that you might not find looking on YouTube or, or even just Googling because uh, Pinterest is kind of a unique search engine for images and related images. So, you know, you pull up one thing and it actually will find related things that look like that. So anyway, I think it's something that I have problems with. It's like use the internet, not for what the big corporations want you to use it for, use it for yourself and really dig deep because I think um, more and more we're so driven by popularity. Um, even what we're shown is driven by popularity and you know, you can get sucked into that funnel and you don't want to be, you want to, you want to focus on your own stuff. So I've really turned off the social media for the past two months and I think that's helped me open some space in my brain and then realize what I can use the internet for. And like I said, it's not for bad news or celebrities or beauty tips. It's for really growing my brain with the best concepts that other people have come up with. So let me know if you think this is helpful and um, would love to know the resources that you've found online for, for learning harmony and music theory. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.